So this is a perfect transition for our next talk. Olivier, fluid overload. What is bad? Volume, chloride, both? Let us know, please. Yeah, we will see this. And another time, probably, we have to take into account patients in surgery, in operating room, and patients in, in ICU, because they are clearly different. Uh, in, in the literature, we have a lot of studies uh, that uh, show that uh, the mortality is clearly associated with the uh, fluid filling given to the patient. Not in the first hours, in most of studies, in the first six or 24 hours, you know, no clear difference, but after the first day, at day three or at day five, the, the mortality is clearly associated with the volume uh, that the patient received. The problem is, most of the time, it's just an association. Uh, there is very few studies that prove clearly the causal effect between fluid filling, the volume of fluid given to the patient, and the mortality. And it's the problem because probably the, the, the sickest patients received the, the most important volume of fluid. And it's really difficult to, uh, to adjust this, uh, even, with, even if uh, you use the severity score to try to adjust the population. In the other hand, in the developing countries, uh, if you use a sepsis protocol, with uh, some basic uh, tools to try to uh, assess the volume responsiveness and the volume that you have to give to your septic patient. Or a usual care, just based on the feeling, the medical feeling of the doctor. Clearly, you will give more fluids with the protocol, the tools were very basic, just the pressure in the uh, jugular access, the main arterial pressure, and the uh, ventilation uh, rate. But clearly, the most volume you give, the more uh, patients will die. And in usual care, you will give less fluid, and you have a better survival. It's interesting to see this. Uh, perhaps if you don't use the good tools, uh, probably you will give more fluid that uh, you have to do and create uh, fluid overload and probably uh, toxicity. In the literature, clearly, we uh, found different level uh, of volume uh, uh, where you have a clear inflection point between good survival and uh, higher mortality. And in this uh, large study, they found uh, about uh, five to six liters. After five to six liters of fluid filling, clearly you have an inflection, inflection point with a higher mortality uh, in day one when you give more uh, fluids than five liters. But another time, it's very difficult to know if the sickest patient received more fluid uh, because it's not a randomized control trial. It's a, a retrospective study on a database. It's interesting to see that if you give hypotonic solution to LC volunteers instead of isotonic solution, you will increase diuresis with hypotonic solution and decrease fluid balance. It's very interesting to see that our, in our mind, isotonic solution were probably the better. But more and more, we, th we think that probably hypotonic solution is good also for fluid balance and diuresis. And last for fluid volume, this, in, this study is controversial, but it's very interesting. Very, very sick uh, pediatric patients in uh, developing countries uh, with uh, very hard uh, septic shock uh, or sepsis, and finally, you see that the mortality is clearly different between populations that receive fluids, any type of fluids, or no fluid. And it's probably the be better for, uh, to, for these patients to, no re to receive no fluid or less fluid than, uh, than albumin or saline. It's a controversial study, but all the time it's interesting, and medicine is clearly 
uh, complex. We can see that more and more in, uh, in, in the current days, uh, we use less saline and more balanced solution, probably because we are more aware about the possible chloride toxicity. And also, as with the volume, the, in the studies, we found more and more that when you use balanced solution instead of saline, we, we are able to decrease mortality uh, in comparison with saline alone or with saline associated with uh, colloids. And some uh, study in operatorium also we are able to decrease uh, the morbidity after uh, abdominal surgery with balanced solution compared to uh, with, uh, with saline. And it's interesting that uh, in this very, very large study, more than 15,000 people in ICU were uh, randomized in cluster, a randomized study between balanced solution and saline with a clear beneficial effect for balanced solution in terms of make 30, that is a composite uh, score with uh, kidney injury and mortality. Uh, it's very large study, more than 15,000 patients. The same study in emergency room with also 15,000 patients with the same results, 30,000 patients where clearly balanced solution are better uh, for a septic patient or acute patients than, uh, than saline. And this, uh, this slide is really representative of what we think now. The more fluid you give, the higher mortality you have, and the more chloride you give, the higher mortality you have also. And probably the answer of the question is both. Volume overload and chloride is probably uh, toxic for the patient if you give too much uh, uh, volume. And we can resume like this. Uh, after the first two liters, because we think that two liters without uh, hemodynamic tools to evaluate uh, and any solution, or a chloremia uh, below uh, 105, if you have no acute brain injury, you can give isofundin or plasma light, but then solution isotonic. If you have brain injury, if you have a brain injury, sorry, you have to give isotonic solution. If you don't have brain injury, you can give hypotonic solution like lactate ranger, perhaps to increase diuresis and uh, uh, hemodynamic to your patients. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olivier. And thank you for showing us the data, showing again that uh, the idea of uh, more fluid in, in patients that are not the, the, the surgical patients, like the septic patient in, uh, in Africa that you showed, uh, uh, increases uh, mortality rather than uh, uh, reduces it. So clearly, uh, we have to differentiate the OR and, uh, and other circumstances. Um, uh, what is it? Is it still reasonable to use normal saline in in our patients if this uh, if this solute is toxic? What should we do? Yes, because the answer is: Do you continue to use cefepim for your patients? You know that cefepim has some neuro neurologic toxicity, but you continue to use cefepim. But you will uh, take care about the the amount of uh, of drug that you will give the good bacteria, the good patient. It's the same for saline. Fluids are drugs, and clearly you have to know the composition of the fluids and the which fluid you have to give to your patient. I continue to use saline for uh, low volume of fluid filling. And for patients that, uh, that face uh, uh, hypochloremic alkalosis, because it's the perfect indication for these patients. They have hypochloremia and alkalosis due to hypochloremia. You will okay. give sodium and chloride. It's the best drug for, for them. But it's clearly the best drug for the best patient and for the best indication. OK, that's a very clear uh, guideline. So small amounts and uh, specific indications uh, to avoid do doing harm to the patient. Emmanuel. Just one question. Uh, you you say small amounts of fluids. So, what is your um, feeling about uh, the recommendation of the surviving sepsis campaign? For example, suggesting that we should administer 30 milliliter per kilogram 
uh, of fluids, every cases at the the very first steps of the of the care. Yeah, it, it, as usual, and probably Didier, perhaps <laughs> we will discuss about this. Uh, it's uh, individualized uh, that you have to individualize the, the the therapeutic, but clearly, in most of the studies, we we shown that. Uh, until 1,500 1, or 2,000 milliliters of fluid for uh, standard guys, 70 or 80 kilograms. Probably no, no, no risk, no, no major risk. risk. Uh, no, no, you, have, you don't have to use specific tools to manage the, the, f the fluid filling and something like that. And any type of fluid is, is okay. After this, probably you. Despite the fact that in some studies we uh, the, the we, we found that just after 500 meters of saline, you have already some effect on chloremia and acidosis and vascular tonicity and so on. After just 500 meters, and but if you transpose uh, this result to the the study you you you, you have shown on African pediatric patients uh, suffering from sepsis, uh, the improvement in outcome was found in patients not receiving fluids, zero fluids. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, this study is, is really disturbing. Uh, but uh, we have two studies that I didn't, uh, we, we, we didn't have enough time, but one study in New England Journal of Medicine in June 2018 with uh, the Australian teams for major abdominal surgery where they found that restrictive uh, strategy are bad, uh, we, uh, was bad with uh, higher mortality. And in the other end, uh, just a pilot study published in uh, ICM in uh, the end of 2018, tried to use the restrictive uh, strategy for early phase of septic shock. Just a feasibility study, but Perhaps we have to... Wait for the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much uh, for this specification.